Okay, I think we're live now. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking about a little bit about STL files and what you can do with them in uh, VCAR Pro. That was a question that Becca Miller had, so I'm going to do my best to try to show what little bit I know about them. Uh, and uh, we'll, just, we'll just go from there. Uh, first of all, I got a few things I want to talk about. Um, you know, of course, the big thing is the uh, meetups coming up this weekend. Uh, it's going to be Saturday starting at 3 o'clock till whenever Melinda runs us off. And uh, my good buddy Hobby's making the drive up from Miami. Uh, got lots of folks coming. Going to have some good Shane's barbecue. Uh, you know, we're going to have some, some barbecue pork, mac and cheese, some baked beans, bread, all the barbecue sauce you want, uh, sweet tea, and, and there will be some unsweetened tea as well. Uh, so y'all come if you can. I already had to call the, the Shane's folks today and tell them, you know, they already had me on the schedule, but I had to call them today and kind of give them about how many I thought and if a bunch more I mean if you know you're gonna come let me know because if it's if it's a bunch of you I need to call them and I can add add a little bit more I'd, I'd hate for somebody to come up and then miss out on some of that Shane's barbecue but uh, anyhow so we're going to be talking some tonight about uh, about the meetup also next month uh, the end of the month we've got the clean sport extravaganza uh, it's in Hickory North Carolina it's a great show uh, if y'all get a chance, uh, you know, you can, whether or not you make it to the meetup, and, you know, if you live over closer to North Carolina, be sure to go to that show. I'll be there both days. It's Friday and Saturday, October 27th and Saturday, October 28th, I believe is what it is. I think I got those dates right. Uh, so a good little show. Um, come, come check it out. And come say hi. Because uh, I'll, like I said, I'll be there. Uh, I just want to give a, a quick shout out to uh, I never, and I mean never, except for Amazon, I never get cool stuff in the mail. And uh, I got something pretty cool the other day, and it was this, I, I can't even remember what it was about. Something about he did a video, and he said, you know, first one or the best comment in the comment section wins a pen or something. I think that's what it was. So I was expecting a pen, uh, you know, or nothing at all. But my buddy Richmond McNatt uh, sent this, and I don't even what you call these things. It's a hollow vessel, I guess. Is, what, is that what you call these in the turning world? Uh, but just, just beautiful. Uh, so thanks very much, Rich. I really appreciate it. You, I mean, you didn't have to do that, but uh, – I, I really appreciate that. That's pretty cool. And it will be displayed for sure. Um, also, I wanted to meet, uh, let's see how many folks we got. We got 20 folks. Um, we'll go down through the list here in a minute. Uh, but I also want to go ahead and mention, I mentioned the other week, and y'all probably thought I was crazy because, you know, I think it was September when I mentioned it. But we're going to start talking about the Christmas challenge. Uh, you know, we got the CNC Christmas challenge coming up, you know, I mean, you know, we're going to be in October pretty soon. And, and before you know it, this year be, be past us. So, uh, it's not too early to start thinking about your project. We had 16 awesome entries last year. Uh, I hope we can get a lot more this year, but it's just get out there with your CNC machine, make a Christmas themed project. Uh, and shoot the video and then send me the link you, you know how you know how how it works uh, and then we'll uh, post the playlist and, and have some prizes and stuff so the, the Christmas challenge starts Black Friday the day after Thanksgiving so instead of going shopping <laughs> spending money get out in your shop and make something um, and we'll end uh, midnight or 11:59 p.m. I guess uh, just Christmas Eve, uh, and then we'll probably get on here whatever Wednesday or so after that. 
and announce the winners and stuff. So not too early to, to get out there and start working on your uh, Christmas challenge. Um, one other thing I want to mention real quick, because of the, the meetup and all the stuff I got going on this week, anybody that's got an order in with me for pretty much anything, it's, nothing's probably going to ship this week. It'll either ship either first of the week or depending on when you order. You know, I, I take everybody just as they the orders come in. Nobody cuts in line in front of the other person. So, uh, But all that stuff will ship next week. So let's uh, let me introduce my 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 little co-host for tonight. I asked Hobby to come on because I know I'm going to be doing some screen shares, and he's going to be uh, kind enough to watch the chat for me. Uh, Hobby, you want to go ahead and uh, like I think a lot of people already know who you are now, uh, but uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, and and we'll do kind of a shout out on the on the chat over there and see who's out there. Oh, hey, folks, I'm Javi, Javier Unzueta from uh, Javi's Woodshop, and uh, uh, you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, yeah, all the regular hangouts, and usually on a hangout every night. Uh, anything else, Dave? Uh, well, let's just do a quick sh shout out here. We've got uh, 27 people now watching. We've got Ken Barber, Jeff Connor, Wild. Foyt, I think is how you say that. I'm not sure how you say your last name, Lyle. I apologize. Trevor Carter, uh, Ed White, it is George Bubba, Larry Duggar. Uh, let's see, who else? Who Steve else? Nealon's on there. Becca Miller. Uh, good to see you all on here. And uh, before we get started, too, if you, if you guys will take just a second, and right below the video portion of this, uh, Click on that little thing that says show more and drop that down and you'll see that I put links to uh, not only my buddy Rich McNatt who uh, sent me this awesome piece but also to uh, design and make uh, website which we're going to be talking about a little bit and also something that Mr. Usweta is going to be doing. Javi, you want to take a minute to talk about that, and then we'll, we'll, oh, we'll talk sure, about it some more. Sure. After I'll, uh, I'll be happy to. I, uh, uh, I've, I found myself uh, creating, uh, uh, helping some friends uh, do their uh, convert raster images to vector and cleaning up a lot of uh, logos, um, <laughs> it seems, on a regular basis. So I figured, well, why not, you know, throw a little... Uh, website together uh for for those services i provide and uh i've been in uh i've been working in photoshop as a graphics designer for over 20 years uh over my ex uh, including the sign shop that i had so uh i to me it's not only is it old hat but i really enjoy doing it uh, the graphics part of it in, in my spare time your image to a vector image or let's say you need a photo converted to a pattern, not a scrolling pattern, because it's got a lot of floaters, but a CNC pattern. Uh, or, uh, or if you're into lasers and you need a photo specifically converted to a black and white two-bit uh, image specific for lasering. Uh, or, or if you need a logo design, vectordesignservice.com is the place to go. And uh, I'm just starting the website, so... Uh, so, uh, so the services are up there. Email me, and I'll be happy to to help you out. And I want to give a quick shout out to Steve Nealon, who has been instrumental in uh, helping me uh, and a few others like uh, like uh, Eloy uh, Escajedo and uh, and David Jones and uh, and Charles Deering uh, in helping us create our website. So, if you need any uh, website work or a place to put a brand new website, and you want to do as little work as possible. <laughs> send the business over to Steve Nealon. Uh, but uh, so that's vectordesignservice.com. Thanks, Dave. And, and so basically, Javi, if I understand you correctly, you can not just convert it to vectors, but you can kind of dial it in depending on whether they want it for laser, CNC. Uh, absolutely. Final, absolutely. Because e each one has their different uh, nuances. For instance, uh, 
these these cups. Hang on, let me get rid of my prototype cup holder. <laughs> these uh, these cups that Chad from Mancrafting, by the way, another plug, uh, creates uh, and 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 sells. They very often need a specific uh, pixel height, and it's got to be a raster image, and it has to be very clean. A lot of people send them, you know, uh, website images at 72 DPI, and it just it doesn't it, it makes the image look muddled and uh, and uh, for lasering uh, any uh, anybody that operates a laser uh, that wants to laser on wood or any any of you that uh, that have a laser attachment on your CNC lasers only understand on and off and anything other than white in other words any level of gray in a in a grayscale picture just lasers as black so if you if you laser a pattern of let's say dave the only thing you'll get is the, that white bit of hair and other than that everything else will be black because there's some color to it of some yeah. sort and uh, you basically got to convert it to uh to an image yeah i'll, I'll show you a sample later if you like <laughs> of of a of a of a, of a dithered image <laughs> yeah okay um yeah, and that kind of ties in with what I was going to start the, the show with. I remember last Wednesday I was showing you all this stuff that these were uh, scroll saw patterns that I got from Charles Deering and just engraved them. And, well, this one happens to be laser, but uh, this is one. You know, I showed you these last week. And I told you I was going to experiment some more. I had actually done them before the show last week, but I didn't have time to run them. But I, I've done some some uh, pictures, and these are just pictures that I got from Google Images and did the carving on, and you know basically kind of did did it like I did Charles scroll saw patterns. But I'm just going to show you. I've only got three or four of them here, and I'll show. Them. We'll see if y'all can figure out who these folks are. Anybody know who that is? I know we've got a little bit of a delay here. Looks like Mr. Lincoln himself. <laughs> Everybody's afraid to guess, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah this was uh, Aben's son. That's right, Becca. I don't know what his son's yeah. name is. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not Joe Bob or something. But uh, anyway, that's uh, that's Aben and uh, his son. Uh, I also did it on the other side. I did a laser thing, and I have to say I really like the engraving with the paint better. I think that turns out better. Um, here's another uh, gentleman here. You got some of you guys might know might know who that is. Mm -hmm. Any guesses? Oh, I I know that one. Well, say you, Becca Miller. You there's, know who that there, is. there's a bit of a delay, I think. So, okay. Somebody, some Lyle says Abe Lincoln. Now that was the last one. Abe, Abe and his son. There you go. Dell got it. That's right, Dell. Ulysses S. Grant, the Yankee. Yeah, the Yankee guy. That's right. That's who it is. Okay. And of course, we're going to have the Yankee guy. We got to have this guy. So, yeah, Sean said it for it. Probably you can put it up there. Okay. <laughs> and then one last one I did. Uh, old Honest Dave here. And again, I did it over here with a laser. And I was experimenting with speeds and power settings and stuff like that. And I really, like I said, it's a little bit too light. I don't think it looks as good as that one, which is just engraved. And black paint and then sand it back off so anyway that's just to show you folks that you know there's all kinds of images and stuff you can get and with a little patience and and um, you know a few minutes in vcar pro or aspire if you have it you can uh, really get some pretty awesome images some of those i mean I, those really turned out way better than i thought they would so i thought uh uh, I've got some old black and white 
you know, like, I don't know what they are, five by nines or six by nines or something of my grandfather and, and my grandmother, which I never knew because she passed before I was even born. Uh, so I'm going to try to scan those and maybe try to do some things with that and, and make them bigger. So but if they turn out worth a flip, I'll let you know. Okay, but tonight we're going to talk about the STL file. And, and again, before we get completely into the STL, I'm going to be doing a screen share and show you one that I've drawn up. Uh, show you how I put the tool path on it and and I'll even show you the result because I cut it today but I do want to mention that if you've got the VCAR Pro uh, I don't know what version it started at I'm assuming it's been like that for a while but I know the VCAR Pro 9 you get when you buy that you get a bunch of free clip art uh, lots, lots of different things. And I've cut because of the, the meetup we're getting ready to have, uh, you know, I'm going to have this, this, uh, garage works over there. So I want to have some stuff to show folks, uh, the capabilities of this machine. So I, I'll just show you a few of them. This one you may remember, uh, it's on my, that's well, out of the shot. I think right over here where I did my little, uh, pallet challenge, but this is the, let me get the light just right where you can see it. That's the uh, eagle that's in, in a dish. Uh, there's, you know, like when you go onto that, that clip art, there's like three of these. There's one like this, there's one that's not in a dish, and then there's a third one of some type, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, and the reason these, you can see that these aren't even cut out or anything. I'm leaving them just, just as they come off the machine so people next week can can see how they come off. So there's the eagle. Today I did, um, this is another one of the free ones that's in there. This is called Leaping Bass. Uh, but just, I mean, like I said, there's a bunch of cool ones. And when I turn it this way, you can see how much that sticks up. There, you know, of course, it's clear in the material there. But And then I did, this is another one of the free ones. This is a uh, a weave, they call it. Uh, Trevor is asking how long how long the eagle took uh, to carve, Dave. Uh, the eagle on on all of these now, I used a quarter inch up spiral as the roughing pass to clear out the material, and then I used a one eighth inch ball mill tapered ball mill uh, ball nails, I should say. Uh, for all the all the finishing stuff on this one, the I should have probably should have wrote these times and stuff down. Uh, but the roughing pass I think took like 10, 12 minutes, something like that, maybe. Uh, and it was uh, I usually ran it at uh, seventy or eighty inches per minute uh, with a one eighth inch uh, depth of cut. And the uh, one eighth inch tapered ball nose, I ran at 120 inches a minute uh, with like a six thou uh, step over. And I believe it took, I think about 45 minutes for this in the finishing pass. So all total about an hour or something, right around an hour. Same thing for the, uh, the time was pretty consistent on all of these. Uh, you know, of course, you can see they're different. This one, it's the roughing pass is kind of hogging out where that dish is and nothing else. Whereas this one, I think probably took a little longer because it's clearing out all around this because I didn't do this one in a dish, although there is one of those in the, the VCAR Pro clip art folder. Um, this one... I'm trying to remember the roughing pass. I was in a hangout with Javi for part of these, so I wasn't keeping that good a track of time. But I remember the uh, finishing pass on this took uh, just under 50 minutes, I think. And again, I'm running it at like 120 inches a minute or something like that. So, so those three are just free stuff that came with VCAR Pro. 
Then I got this one, and again, this is still rough because I haven't uh, cut it out of this board. This is a piece of maple, and the, these, by the way, were all uh, older. Uh, this is a piece of maple, and this one, I'm trying to hold this where I, because I know I'm having a bit of light out here, but this one is one that I got from the file section of CNC router tips Facebook group. If you go to the file section, they have a ton of stuff. Of course, it's not all STLs and stuff like that. This one was an STL. Um, but, uh, and I'm trying to remember the time on this one. This one took a good bit more time because it's obviously it's a lot bigger. Uh, I'm thinking this one took about three hours total. I think it was about an hour for the roughing pass and about two hours for the uh, finishing uh, pass. But this is a pretty cool, I don't know, and this is what I'm talking about. I'm glad we're talking about these STLs because even if, if you're like me, I can't draw a straight line with a ruler and a pencil. Uh, but I can buy somebody else that's, you know, and I'm happy to support somebody else that can do work like this. Uh, and that's why I have the, the link down below for the, the design and make uh, thing. That's, that's it's somehow tied in with Vectric. It used to be Vectric something or other, and now they call it design and make. But there's clip art where you can buy just a, a single uh, model in either, I think you can get it in STL or uh, I guess I should have mentioned all these that were that it came with VCAR Pro. There are a V3M format, you know, so the end of the program is dot V3M. Uh, but I think you can get them in that format and in STL and uh, some other formats uh, as well on that design make. Uh, website and like I said it's to me it, you know like I said I got this one for nothing because it's available at you know they're all sharing this over at the uh, uh, CNC router tips Facebook group but you know I, if I'd have found this one on design and make I wouldn't mind paying you know whatever for it because that's that's pretty cool a lot of detail uh, very cool so, do we have any questions over there? Well, they were asking uh, how much VCarve Pro was, and yeah. uh, I, I I answered. I think it was about uh, six ninety nine. Last I saw, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's still the the current price. And, but there are upgrades available, I believe, for uh, four hundred dollars if you have uh, a lower version. That's the beautiful thing about Vectric. If uh, or no, three forty nine. If you have two D. And to upgrade to Aspire from VCarve, I believe it's 400. I could be wrong, uh, but basically you're you're not losing money by taking it incrementally. Right. Right. Yeah. They uh, they they they're pretty fair with their stuff. I mean, when you first when you're brand new into this, just like I was years ago. I remember when I first bought VCarve Pro, it was version 4.6, and it was only 5.99 then. And I just thought, oh man, six hundred bucks. But man, once you get that stuff and start play, even way back then, I'm thinking I see why you know it's worth twice that to me. Uh, but uh, and you yeah, and you make the money up real quick um, if 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 you're doing any kind of production or or yeah or, or sales. Yeah. Okay, well let's uh, let's move on. And I see you did answer correctly. And all these uh, that I was showing earlier, these are all just that's half inch MDF. That's all it is, and a little black paint. Okay, let's. Uh, okay, well I, I'm gonna show Becca and everybody else that's here. What do we got here now? Wow, 46 people. Awesome. Uh, Landis Stutes in the house. Robert Cooper. Jesse Brown, James Foos, I guess. Glad to, glad to have you all here. I'm going to try to do a screenshot now, and I will show you, again, what little bit I know with SDLs. Uh, you know, most of you, anybody that knows me knows that I, you know, in my past life when I worked for other folks, 
I always did uh, 3D modeling in SolidWorks. Uh, so I know how to create 3D models in SolidWorks and they have the option to save as an SDL. You could probably do the same thing in BiCAD. You know, we've talked about BiCAD before. Uh, but uh, I just drew something up. I, you know, I didn't spend a whole lot of time back, uh, sorry, but I, I just drew something simple uh, and, it, and it worked. So uh, I'm going to go do the screen share now. Uh, David Stewart in the house. Uh, so Javi, if you'll uh, keep an eye on the the uh, chat over there and just Absolutely. jump in here when you see uh, see a question. Fifty yep. some viewers now. That you guys. Anybody has any questions? Just uh, I, I got my eye on it. Okay, I guess I should uh, present myself first, so it won't be. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, let me present to everyone. Screen share. Mm -hmm. so there we go. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Javi, you see my screen okay? I can. can. Okay. Uh, let me, uh, let's see. There's my VCAR Pro. So I'll open that up real quick. Or maybe not, <laughs> depending on the speed of this laptop. Okay, uh, now, well, let me do this first before we uh, let me open this and go here. Okay, let's see. Okay, there's the STL that I created. This right here is just a JPEG of let's see what do we want to open this with uh, i guess we we'll use this i don't know okay so this is this is just something like i said it's real simple i just created a base flange if anybody uses solidworks i'll know what i'm talking about just created a base flange in solidworks um hit uh, sketch tools and use the text function to put my logo on this piece and i don't know if i can i guess i can zoom in here we'll see but uh, dave we have a quick question if you could explain the rough cut versus the finished depth and bits that's what landis stutes is uh, is asking okay um let's hold up hold that question in because you'll be able to see when i do the preview in vcar pro you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. And I'll do not just this one, but I'll do some of the, uh, like the Eagle and stuff that I did. All those are on this laptop. So uh, I'll show those and it'll make more sense than me trying to explain uh, what it is probably. But here, if I, if I zoom in on this, you can see that I've got this text sticking out. I don't know, I think it was like a hundred thousandths or something like that. I'm not even sure what it was, but this is just a, a JPEG of what I made. And that's that's actually a screenshot of the SolidWorks screen. So when I got ready to save it, I saved it as an STL. And if I come to this STL, I believe there's something on here that will open it up as well. Yeah, let's put each is. And you can see that it basically kind of looks just like what I was showing you in the in the SolidWorks model. But this is the file that I'm going to import into VCAR Pro. Now, I did this earlier, and I'm going to try to do it again, but you know how it is when you're live. I'll probably forget what the heck I did. Uh, I'm going to hit Create New File. Uh, I think the size I used was, uh, let me see, I think it was about 30 inches by five, give or take. The board, you'll see the board when I show it in a minute. It's, it was a piece of scrap, basically. It, it measured like five and a quarter inches wide on one end and four and a half or something on the other. So it was pretty much useless, but I thought, well, it's big enough for this, so I'll use it and see how it comes out. Uh, 
So I'm going to say, okay, there, the thickness, I, I left it at half. It was really about three quarter, but that doesn't make any difference in this particular case. Okay. So now that I'm in here and Becca, I hope you're following me here. So I've created a new folder and basically what you're seeing here, that's how big my piece of wood is more or less. Um, now I'm going to come up here to the model and come down here to where it says import component or 3D model. And then when that opens up, you see right there, and you can also change this to STL if you want. There's that GarageWorks CNC STL file. So when I go to tell it that's one I want to accept, it comes out like this. And I will say, you'll notice that this, the orientation is selected for top. In playing around with this, I found out that I, when actually what I made was the front view was actually the back side of that. And I'm not sure how all that works, but this is the way I wanted it to import in because all I wanted to do was hit center of the model and it puts it, puts it right on that piece of material. But I had to play around and do it a few times before I learned, you know, for a flat piece like that, I actually flipped it where you couldn't see garage works. You're basically looking at the back side of it, made that my front view, then saved that as an STL, and then this is how it came in. So I'm not going to be much help on asking questions because I'm sure SolidWorks probably does it different than ViCAD and different than Auto. Uh, whatever it is, what Fusion 360 and all those different kinds of things. So you basically just have to try one and see which way it comes in. And if it if it's flipped all candy wampus and you can't get it turned around the right way, just keep going back and changing. Here you can see I've got the uh, the depth below top set for 0.175. And I really didn't change much in here. I mean, this is basically this three inches here. That's how big the model was. You know, I told you my board was like, I put five by 30, but this piece here, my base flange in SolidWorks was 28 inches long by three inches. So that's, that's where you see that 28 by three there. Okay. And then it's showing the 0.35, uh, as the thickness there, which is that, that 0.35 comes from when I drew, drew this in SolidWorks, I made that base flange a quarter inch thick, and then I told uh, to raise the text 100,000. So that's where the 350 is coming from. Okay. Any questions before I move off of this screen? Well, earlier, uh, Trevor was asking if uh, you get a V3M file if it goes directly into your VCarve or Aspire uh, clip art folder. Uh, V3M is a is a vector uh, image file. It 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 could import directly into it. Yeah, I, I kind of hovered my mouse. So if you go to VCarve Pro right now, and I'm not sure about Aspire because I don't have Aspire, but I'm assuming it may be the same. But if you go to VCarve Pro and click on that right down here where that clip art is. Uh, in fact, let's just do it. And then I'll go up here to clip art. Any of these things I hover over, you can see where it says the extension is V3M. And this is what I was talking about. See, here's an apple. Here's, you know, it's like a plain apple. Here's one in a dish. And then here's one that's, I guess that's flush with the top surface. Uh, same thing with the, here's a, a bass, they, you know, they have a bunch of different stuff in here and they also have a folder here for design and make. And obviously I haven't bought anything from design and make, so there's nothing in there, but there probably will be very soon <laughs> because I was looking around. I've already, I've already selected about four or five that I want to buy and do, but they have a lot of stuff uh, in here. There's the Eagle. This is the one that I showed you. This is what I used. And to, to do this, and I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll go through it uh, again after we get done with this other one. And you just basically just drag and drop those. Just pull them right over and drop them in. And, and I may have uh, misunderstood the question a little. Trevor, if you were asking if 
you have a v3m file if you can just drop it into your clip art folder yes you can and it'll pop up in the uh in the in the menu yeah yeah it should yeah it should pop up in that in that clip art folder when you click on it once you add something in there um uh, okay so if there's not any other no other question uh, about this hey, sean sean had never seen that in vcarve uh, could you uh uh, I guess you could point out the tab that you're using to get to the uh, to the modeling uh, clip art because okay. sometimes it's a little hard to find. Yeah, right now I'm in the modeling. Right down here on the bottom, I'm in the modeling tab. But here's what you're usually in, the drawing tab. And then the third one over is clip art. And you will see... Um, let's see, let me go up one. Oh, that's not doing it. Um, but this this is the uh, okay. It's because I got it dropped down, I guess. Yep, he saw it now. Okay, yeah. So here's all the different things. Now they do have some two D vectors in here too. You know, they have like a keyhole shape and a light bulb and stuff, so that you you know, so you don't have to draw that. There's a jigsaw puzzle piece, so they do have some two D stuff, but. Uh, all the rest of this stuff is pretty much the 3D stuff. Uh, you know, here's the, uh, you know, that weave I was telling about or I showed a while ago. It was, I think, that one right there. Um, but, yeah, those tabs are right down here on the bottom. Like I said, normally you're in this tab and the modeling tab, and then there's the clip art. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK here because I've got that kind of just the way I want. And there you can see, now again, this, this outer part, this lighter part, this is the size of my material. And I wanted to make it bigger so that I could put my clamps out here. And, you know, that's why I made the, the my board was like, I just saw it, uh, miter cut it to uh, 30 inches, and then this is 28. So I knew I'd have a, a, an inch where I could hold it down on each corner and no danger of hitting the, the clamps. So... Now we're going to go through, I'll go over here to the tool pass side. And another thing you can do here before I leave this, you can click on this and this comes up and here you can change things about that model. Like this base height, I can change that. I've actually done this on some of the other, other things I was cutting. Um, this one I just kind of left alone just to see if it was going to work right. But, uh, but you can actually change some of these components here. And again, you know, I'm no expert on, on this 3D stuff. I'm learning like y'all are. Uh, anything I learn, I'm happy to pass on. But uh, don't ask me any tough questions just yet because I'm still uh, still using the, the free stuff that came with it and, and trying to learn some of it here. But I did draw this STL, so we'll, we'll go with this. I'm going to come over here. Now back to, uh, what was it, Sean, I think, that asked the question about uh, the tool pass. What, I, what I've been using, and you can do a lot of different things, but right down here there's 3D roughing tool path, and there is 3D finishing tool path. So the roughing tool path is what, you know, something you want to use that's going to remove the material fairly quick, uh, but it's not going to be able to get in all those letters and, and you know, real close in some of the tight places. So I'm going to go ahead and let's see, it's asking me my material. Like I said, I got half, but that, that's fine because it doesn't matter. It's not going down that far. Uh, I think all of that's okay. Okay, now here I'm using a quarter inch end mill. I have an up, up, up spiral cut end mill. Uh, I got some brand new ones the other day, so I put one of those in. And what I'm using for this is the material boundary. Now what that means is that means when, it, when it's doing this roughing pass, it's going to use the material bound, uh, boundary uh, to do this 
but it's the material of the model. So, wait, wait a minute. Let me think now. I may have to change that material thing to match the other. Well, we'll try it and see. Because I'm, I'm not, now that I've said that, I'm not sure. But I think, I think it's only going to cut out the year. So, I'm going to use the material boundary. I've got uh, a zero offset. Uh, I'm going to use raster uh, along the X. So, it's basically going to kind of move across this way. And we'll see what happens when I calculate that. Okay, that's what I thought. I, I had to rethink that. And so let me go back here so I don't tell anybody wrong. I should have made the material. Let me go to my drawing tab. Probably somebody over in the chat going, yeah, he's going to screw up here. Okay, so I'm going to make that the same as what the um, uh, the, the model is. Okay, and now let me come back over here and I'll just recalculate that one. 3D roughing. All right, it didn't like something there. Let's see what it does. Because basically, it's not going to show. It's not going to show you that. Yeah, that's too quick. Let me slow it down so we can see what's happening there. Oh, it never did. It never did change it. Let me just. Let me just delete that toolpath. I'll put another one on there. Maybe that's what the deal is. Okay. So we'll go roughing pass again, material boundary. Check that the pass step for the tool does not exceed the depth of the model being machined. The depth of the Z level pass is controlled by for the tool. Well, I should have, I guess I can check that, but I think I've got that, um, tool set to yeah one eighth per pass I think see I knew when I did this live it wouldn't work never fails yeah it's not wanting to put the tool path on there for some reason what's the uh, what what's the uh, depth that you're uh, roughing it at uh, well, I've got the, the tool is set for a one eighth per pass. Well, what's the total depth? Uh, well, it should only go down a hundred thousandths because that's how much the letters stick up. Unless. Mm -hmm. Now, let me change that just to see if that, that lets it. And I've already done this, on a, and I've got that file in here, but I was going to try to do it from scratch. Now it doesn't like that either. Is the is the actual uh, path chosen on the uh, drawing tab? On your 2D view? Well, let's see. Maybe that was it. Uh, let's see. Now, okay, well, just for giggles here, I'm going to close this one out, and I'll open the one that I did and see if we can figure out what I'm doing wrong now. Yeah, and Tommy, I agree. Tommy G says uh, you may have lost your material thickness. Um. Okay, now this one, like I said, this is the one I used earlier. And let's see, if I do this, Okay, I see. I see one difference is this one is set for the model boundary. Yep. Okay, so maybe that's it. So there's okay. So that's all the same. 
And if I calculate this one, it should calculate. How, yeah, it's going to work on this one. Yeah, somehow I, I did something. Yeah, that's the, that, that's the hardest thing with 3D modeling. You have to check the uh, bounder, the the z boundaries, the material thicknesses. Sometimes it goes higher or lower than than what you're cutting. It's it's <laughs> that's about the only yeah. complicated part. Okay, so basically, what this roughing pass is going to do? Whoever asked this question earlier, that was uh, I believe that was Landis. Okay, so basically it's just running back and forth. If I if I reset and we watch just this preview, that's all it's doing. And I guess I did have my material in this one set at five by something. I think I had it five by twenty eight in this one. That's that's why the length is going all the way, but the width isn't. That's what I get for trying to start from scratch and do it once I have. <laughs> once I've done it once, I should have stuck with that one. Yeah. Okay, and I'll just speed this up too. Okay, well, it actually showed all of it there. Okay, now one thing I wanted to show, which I missed out on because that other one didn't work, is on the 3D finish. When I did when I did this, if I can zoom in on this somehow, let's see if I can. Okay, here we go. Notice how these kind of have rounded edges. They're not real sharp edges. But when I drew the model, it had sharp edges. And what I did to get that to smooth out is, and let's see if I can find it here. I came down here and put smooth selected components. And that's why you see on this finishing pass, it's all nice and rounded over like that. Okay, so since I've totally screwed up this whole demonstration here, <laughs> does anybody have any questions? Um, your, your question is probably going to be, why is he trying to show how to do this when you don't know what he's doing? Uh, <laughs> that's never stopped me before. Actually, I've learned a lot. So, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, the main thing I wanted to do, like I said, the tool path isn't that difficult. If I click this, uh, I bet you if I change this to material like it was in the other one. Okay. Now it's cut now it's cutting out that back part. But you see the difference when I change from model boundary to material boundary. If I if I put material boundary it's going to go to the boundary of whatever I set up my material. The the size and, and width of my material. Uh, if I use the model boundary it only goes around however big that model that was imported in. Tommy G. <laughs> okay. So now, could you could you could you show real quick, Dave, the difference between just the roughing pass and the finish pass? I mean, yeah. Let me. Uh, I tell you what. Let me go to one. Of, let me go to the eagle. It's more. It's it's a yeah. lot clearer on something like that. So let right. me go to. Uh, Ted Ted Krieger is asking what uh, STL stands for. Um, Standard tessellation language, uh, in case you're, you're wondering, which you're is exactly. which is one form of of many vector images, but it's mostly used by 3D CAD and 3D modeling uh, programs. It's pretty right. much the standard. Right. I'm glad you knew that because I I know you're right once you said it, but I would I would never have remembered remembered that. It's okay. It's like, so here is the uh, trivia I have. Yeah, you do well in Jeopardy. <laughs> uh, here's the uh, eagle head, and let me get over here to the 3D view, and I'll run through and do just the selected tool path. Well, crap. Oh, they're both selected. You yeah. <laughs> My bad. All right, let's try this again. 
All right. No, nope, they're still both selected. When you when you reset the preview, I believe it. There. But I'm but I'm preview, putting. You got to choose preview visible toolpaths. I think you selected all by accident. Okay. okay. I do okay. that out of habit as well. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So there there is the roughing pass, and you see right now it's done, and it still doesn't really look like much of anything. But it's just hogging out some material that will save a lot of time from the finishing pass. So, like I said, remember this is a eagle's head and it's down in a dish. So you see all these parts here. It's, you know, not maybe not so deep here, but right up in here towards the center, it's going to be uh, much deeper in that, in that dish thing. And then, of course, when I do the finish pass, that comes in and cleans up all the rest, just going back and forth. And each one of those times, each time it goes back and forth, it's moving over six thousandths. So obviously that, the finishing pass usually takes way longer than the roughing pass. Uh, but uh, it's, I just love watching you know when you when you've got it roughed out like that and then you start that that finishing pass and how you just kind of see the whole project come to life so that's uh phil, phil that's is asking cool. if you need a third tool path to finally cut it out well i could i mean i don't you know like i said i was just doing these as samples um to show what the the machine's capable of doing i'm these aren't really anything I'm going to use for anything other than that. But yeah, you could use a, you know, you could draw, come in and draw a, uh, around that and cut that out or, you know, a different kind of shape or something like this. Um, also you'll notice this, this was that piece of alder I had and it was about seven and three eighths. So I've got this size over here set to seven and three eighths square. But my actual piece that I cut, and you, if you remember when I was holding it up, it's, I cut it 10 by 7 and 3 eighths. And that way I had plenty of room to get my clamps and stuff out of the way. They didn't, it wouldn't have mattered, oops, wouldn't have mattered that much on uh, that one because uh, it, I don't think it was getting near the, uh, the corners. But on the other ones, I needed to. So I just went back there and cut a bunch of them 10 by whatever the width was, and that's what I made. Uh, uh, Dave, um, Landis is asking what the rough depth, uh, rough, <laughs> rough depth you set uh, was, and uh, and Becca wanted to know if you set different depths for different parts. Uh, you can. Let me go. Let me go back to that eagle head, and I'll show you when you come over here to the the 3D view and come over to the tool pass side of it. If you hover this pointer over this you see that pops up and it says the maximum depth of the finish is 0.5146 okay when i do for the roughing the maximum depth is a half inch so that's i don't know if that answers their question also you can see here was the uh you see the estimated times they were pretty close the estimated time to roughing was about 14 and a half minutes for finishing. Uh, it says an hour and nine minutes. I actually got it about 50 minutes because I have this programmed uh, for that tool at 80 inches a minute. But once I started it, you know, it's it's cutting just so little off each time, about six thou worth of material. So I, I speeded it up to about one 120, I think it was. So I got it to finish, even though it says an hour and nine minutes, or I got to finish in about 50 minutes, I think. Got a couple questions uh, from Ted. Uh, he was asking about STL formats, if there's a specific drawing program to save. Um, and uh, I believe I can answer that. Ted, uh, STL a format, uh, like certain uh, vector formats, are geared for 3D because they're wireframe type of formats. And... Uh, and they're better for 3D, whereas some vector formats are just plain uh, 2D. 
uh, uh, Dave, can you recommend any any particular program? A Fusion 360 is a good one, but uh, I mean, for designing uh, in 3D. Well, uh, you know that ViaCAD that we've talked about. You know, I even upgraded to the ViaCAD Pro, and it will do all this stuff like we're talking about here. Uh, let me real quickly hit new and let's see I'm just gonna throw some numbers in here I'll just put 10 by 10 and I'll put three quarter there and then I'm going to show how you just drag and drop those those in here okay so now let's say I want to do a new uh, Eagles head that one in the dish so I'll come over here to my clip art click on the clip art animals okay here's here's the one I use so I can just drag this to the center of my material and there it is okay now this size that it is right now happens to be if you click on this You can see that the shape height is 0.4723. Okay. Now, what you can do is, let's say, since I made this 10 by 10, let's say I want to make make this thing bigger. So uh, I can come back to my drawing tab, just highlight that and then click this uh, select object size and see it's really only about six inches or so or not quite six inches so let's say since i got a piece of material 10 by 10 i'm going to make that eight and also notice that the link x and y is checked so when i make this one eight it's going to make the other one eight as well and it's going to auto scale the z Yep. So now that whatever it was, 0.4723 or whatever, that will be different now because I've got it bigger. And and Dave, if I may, if I may interject for a second, because there there are a lot of questions on the depth of cut. Uh, the eagle that you see there, uh, that Dave pictured, where the darker areas are deeper and the lighter areas are lighter, is merely a representation of the actual 3D file. The 3D file itself contains different depths and that's what the programs uh, 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 basically carve from and model from this is it, it this is not saying that black is deeper and and white is lighter it's just to show you what it looks like that's the that's the reason um, white is lighter and, and black is deeper that's just a representation right because okay. they're, they're asking about how the how one of the biggest questions, most popular common questions, is how does it know to cut deeper or lighter? That that is all within the STL file, which is a three dimensional vector file. Just imagine a vector file, but in in with one extra dimension. Right now, like I said, y'all remember when I clicked on this a while ago, it showed that the shape height was 0.4723. But it was only a little under six inches big now I've got it eight inches big so when you scale it and you scale everything proportionately the shape height is going to change as well and yeah, that's it's, all it's, that's because basically I'm scaling that whole model not just a part of it but that whole model yeah, it's 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 yeah. A lot of the confusion was because it was a, a grayscale or a black and white image from this view, and you can't just import a picture. Uh, it's not as simple as importing a picture, and uh, and uh, even VCarve does not uh, create those heights, uh, and and it does a very well. It does a good job for what it is, but it doesn't uh, do it justice compared to a true three D rendered or 3d created file right um, and I see Sean over there says that file has all its vectors right no there's not any vectors in that file it's it's different than a vector file uh, it's right it's 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 a 3d vector file it's 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 a little bit more of a wireframe 
It's, right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a different design. It's it's not quite that simple as as vectors, but it's composed of many vectors. If you can, yeah, <laughs> understand. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. It's not two D vectors, which is what we normally think of. Uh, yeah. But it's a it's a it's like a wireframe type thing. And it, it, I know pro folks probably don't know what the heck I'm talking about, but it's like I said, it, it's hard. There's so much about 3D modeling. There's no way we could ever get every question answered in, you know, 60 minutes or whatever. Uh, there's 2D. When I first started learning SolidWorks years ago, I had been drawing in 2D uh, for a long time. And at first, it was very confusing because I had been drawn in 2D for so long. But then once you start doing it, I mean, it all just falls together and, and it's really, there's no other way. I'd never go back to drawing just 2D now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, uh, that, um, that you might mention that, that it includes is uh, a path on the outside. But most of these models actually include the perimeter path which allows you to create pockets around it or or uh, so so you could actually re not not just uh create the bowl i mean like clearly this model has uh a concavity and the and the eagle sticking out of it but you could actually drop that into a in a pocket uh or or drop a pocket around it uh if you wanted to uh because because uh, I was saying the uh, the path itself, a simple 2D path is included in all these STL images. So in case you wanted to uh, to to use that for a profile or or anything like that, or for yeah. a pocket. Okay, uh, let's go. I see Ted said he wants to see the tool pass again. So since we've got a new, you know, this is a different. It's the same eagle, but it's a different uh, size. So we'll go over here and again, I'll hit the roughing, 3D roughing tool path. I'll select my uh, quarter inch end mill. Uh, I'm gonna tell it to use the model boundary, which means it'll just go around this circle, everything inside that circle. Uh, and then we'll hit calculate. Okay. And remember, on the last one, it was smaller, so the, the cycle time was 14 and a half minutes. This one's, uh, or maybe it was bigger than, it must have been bigger than this one. Um, 13, uh, 45 is the estimated on this one. There was, a, there was a question a while back on how that estimate is reached. Uh, Dave, you want to take that? Well... A lot of a lot of things have to be right before you get your uh, the estimates close. When you go to select this uh, this tool, uh, now I should have hit edit, I guess. What well, doesn't matter, but well, come on, there we go. You know, you the it's taking the times based on how much it has to cut in the model versus you know like this i have the past step set up for one eighth inch i have a step over on this one for nine thousandths uh or i'm sorry ninety thousandths or 36 percent uh and i've got a feed rate of 70. so that's kind of and it's got the plunge rate at 20 inches a minute so basically that estimated time is uh, Vectric is trying to figure out how many times it's got to plunge and at what rate, how much it's got to move uh, at that feed rate, and also the pass step. So if it knows it has to cut 200 thousandths, it knows because my pass step is one eighth, it's going to have to make at least two passes. So yeah. that's kind of what it does. And then, of course, if you're like me and you start it and you start bumping it up, with the override on Mach 3, you throw all that out the window. So usually what I do is I keep my feed rates fairly conservative here because I know I can always speed it up on the fly. Um, I'd rather do that than have them too fast and have to slow it down. Right. The only thing with, with in Mach 3, you have to remember when you 
speed it up on the fly, you're speeding up all feed rates, not just the, you know, like I'm not just speeding up that 70, I'm speeding up the 20 as well, the plunge. Yeah. And because that override in Mach 3 overrides all those F commands. And and Ted, as as um, as all the, as different machines uh, are have little tweaks, each one has their own little uh, little nuances that might make one uh, a little faster or a little slower. And as uh, Mark Lindsay and and Dave are fond of saying, your mileage may vary. So there are settings to bias or to compensate in uh, Aspire or VCarve to adjust that uh, that time. You can actually adjust it one way or another. If you find if you time your job and find that the, that it's off. Again, you can you can adjust those uh, the the calculations. Yeah, and what what I believe you're talking about, Javi, is let me get that that all done. When you come over here and you hit this clock, which is going to give you a summary including the time estimates. That's it. Yeah, it's saying that based on a rapid rate of 200 and a scale factor of one. This roughing pass should take 1345. Uh, um, you know, I know that it, it, when I do a rapid move, my rapid is at 200, but if it's an, an a X and Y move together, it's 236. So again, like I think this is what you're talking about, being able to tweak it, Javi. Am I, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah, you can change that scale factor it, like if you run a program and it took like right here, this says 1345 and you run it and it took 1445, you could come back here and play with this and keep checking this estimate until you get it to 1445 or what, whatever your actual time was. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and put the uh, finishing toolpath on here again. I'm going to use the model boundary. Uh, and you can, and here you can see how this outer part of this dish going down. You notice the when I used the end mill, it it started down here to hog out because it would have been too deep to do it here. And here you can see it didn't it didn't touch any of that. It left that that little spot right there alone. So we'll hit calculate here. Okay, and it says an hour and 48 minutes. If, if you could, Dave, if you could zoom in a little on those tool paths and tilt it slightly so they could see a little bit of, because uh, it, it looks like one big blue blob, uh, so they can see the actual tool paths, it, it kind of looks neat. Okay, I'm not sure what you're asking me. because uh, on, the, on the picture itself, on the, uh, on the preview. Okay. Can, can you can you zoom in? Well, the, the preview for that second pass is going to be one big blue blob. <laughs> if, if you get in real close, it, it well, I, I guess. Okay, yeah. well, all right, let, let's see. Let me let me zoom in and see if we can see the because I think there was what nine thousandths. Yep. Yeah, it's it's really close, but. Uh, Oh, let's see here if I can get this thing to. And sometimes at an angle, it's it's kind of neat because you can actually see the see a bit of the pattern through the tool paths and yeah, you can yeah, see it, it a little. It, it, I just zoom into a. It's kind of hard to see there. Okay, can you zoom into a section with the scroll of the mouse or or? Let's see here. Okay, there we go. Yeah. There, there you go. But yeah, you know, like I said, it's overlapping. Uh, what did I say? Nine thousandth, I think. Yeah. No, not out of tool pass. <laughs> uh, I think it's six thousandths on the uh, finish pass. So yeah, it's pretty pretty tight. 
So yeah, it's doing a bunch of straight lines and going up and down and up and down. Now, th this it's kind of interesting to note that when you create, if you have a spire and you create, a, let's say, a, a bowl effect on text, it will actually follow the line of the text as opposed to just doing a kind of a crosshatch like this does. It, 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 uh, the tool paths are a bit more efficient, if you will. Well, on this one, uh, let's see, where is it? Yeah, see, I have a raster and I have the raster angle at zero. So it starts right here and it's just a beep, 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 back and forth. Right. And it just keeps getting longer and longer. And you can set this angle, you know, I could set it to like 45 and then it would go across that way so you can adjust this this raster angle i actually played around with that uh and did it at 45 degree and it's i don't know why but it increased the cycle time considerably so i left it at uh at zero and just went back and forth straight across yeah and plus you're only moving you know the only thing that's really moving is the x-axis and that's why i cranked it up to like 120 and when the Y moves, it's only jumping back like six thousand. Yeah, that's 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 a very good point. That's probably why it took so long because it was moving both axes at the same time, right? right. As opposed to just one little notch and yeah. straight across. Well, so I'm sure if you set it at zero, and you'd probably get similar results if you set it at ninety and ran straight up and down with the Y, and then you know the X would only move six thousands. It's probably going to be a good bit more efficient than than trying to do the, the 45 degrees or 30 degree angle or whatever angle you're, you're talking about. Trevor was asking earlier uh, on the bass how you would uh, profile around the outside. Um, and I guess to create uh, uh, maybe a profile, possibly a round over or some, I mean, uh, design wise, how could you, I know it's a simple matter, but if you could show the, procedure or well that's that's really a good question because i was trying to not on this particular one but i was experimenting and trying to highlight this mm -hmm. and then do an offset to try to create something around it right and it keeps saying no vector selected so that's what i mean it's it's thinking when you do that offset vector, Cho choose choose the fish uh, uh, click click on the actual fish for, uh wait yeah well it is it is click and okay now now try it oh it's, i don't yeah. know why mine i think it's look it's looking for 2d vectors and not what cut you know the 3d vectors that this is that's strange i guess the ones i've i've imported just happen to have a little line around the outside uh and I guess these models don't. Uh, that's really strange. Yeah. But uh, one one way to do it, Trevor, is to create a bowl around the fish, uh, ra rather an oval, and just use the 3D to create a, a concave bowl. But you will have to go to the modeling tab and and kind of uh, have it render both of them together, because if not the bowl will cut out the fish <laughs> um one will one will override the other just like as if you were to create two pieces of text uh and uh and for the out well for the outside i don't have to tell you how to create a profile uh, yeah now let, let me uh let me try something here hobby because remember i told you in this uh i'll just stick with that size in here, there's like three different ones for, oops, clip art. So let me go find that leaping bass, wherever it was. Did I miss it? Okay, yeah. See here, here's, this is the one I pulled in. Right. And see this one, let me pull this one in and see, because it looks like it's got kind of an outline around it. Yeah, Kevin says go to the modeling and put a vector around it.
Okay. Um, how does he mean to do that? That's a good question. Uh, I've always, when, when I work with 3D images, I just throw them into a, a bowl that I create from a vector. So, um, vector boundary and modeling. Yes, Ed, they, they do. They have, he's asking if they have the bass in the bowl. Oh, yeah. Or in a dish. But if you wanted to, if you wanted to create your, your bowl, for instance, um, if Dave, if you go back to 2D and create just a circle, yeah, just a circle around it. Um, Mark was saying down at the bottom in the modeling tab, click the modeling tab, but I think that was a little early. Okay, and then if you choose the circle and go to the modeling tab, Oops. Uh, oh, sorry. Still got that active, I guess. Okay, so choose the circle and then go to the modeling tab. Modeling tab. And, uh, uh, okay, now I'm a little semi lost because you should be able to create a bowl out of that circle. I don't have mine open. Um, let's see. Modeling tab and click the arrow looking button on top. Ah, uh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mark just completely corrected me. I, I'm totally. That's my fault. It's in Aspire. It's not in VCar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're. we're I, I. I. I totally blew that. I'm. I'm so used to Aspire. I'm sorry about that. Okay. All but, righty then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's, we're there's, trying to do something. Well, there's the issue. Yeah. <laughs> there's the issue. We didn't spend yeah, eighteen hundred bucks. Like I said, that's you know I wanted to try to show folks how you, with VCar Pro you can do a lot of cool three D stuff. You can't really design in 3D because that's that's for the big dollar uh, Aspire program. Right. But you can bring these in, and they do allow you to import, you know, either the V3Ms or the. Uh, I guess I guess we're done in here. I'm going to get off of here. Uh, you know, the V3Ms and the STLs and stuff like that. So it's. Uh, Where'd everybody go? Um, oh, I'm here still. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay. But I, I don't see you, though. Uh, and there, Nobody sees me? I'm uh, right here. I see me. Click on your, well, maybe uh, maybe it's just me, but uh, could uh, click off, uh, mute and unmute your video, and sometimes that works on, on these Hangouts. Okay. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> Oh, you blinked on for a second. Ah, okay. there you are. Am I back? You're back. Okay. Yeah, like I said, uh, the whole purpose of this little thing tonight was to show that if you don't have the, the high dollar Aspire, you can still do cool stuff like this. You just can't design it. So that's why, oh, and I never did. I never did show this. You know, we. I'm showing you the garage works thing. This is. Is it? And you notice, you see how crooked this board is. It's uh, this board up measures like five and a half inches or something on one end, and about four and something on the other. It's ridiculous. Hey, I, I I don't see it. It looks fine to me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it'll look okay once I cut it out, you know, where the where the thing is, but yep. but it's really it's really on this board really crooked. But it does have, and if I can zoom in here and kind of tilt it, you can see that it curved all of this stuff. So basically my um, one eighth inch tapered ball nose was you know started down here at the bottom. And then we go back and forth and back and forth. So each one of these letters, it raised up and, yep. and went over, but put that nice, smooth uh, 
finish on there. And actually, actually, it turned out pretty awesome for this crappy piece of wood. Sean, Sean was asking which program did you use to create that? I, I used SolidWorks to create the 3D model. And again, like you saw it when I showed the picture, I just made a 3-inch by 28-inch base flange, added text, and I made the text two inches high. And for anybody who don't, don't know, the Garage Works logo is all of these letters are uh, Stencil. GI stencil or someplace. Stencil is really the same, GI stencil, something to call it that, except for the X because the X is bigger. Uh, and it is a Times New Roman uh, bold. That's what the... Uh, the logo is so I just did those uh, put them in there raised them uh, like I said a hundred thousands and then saved that file as an STL file and then brought it into VCar Pro centered it on the material and then did a roughing pass and a um, finishing pass And uh, James Foos was asking about how you clamped it down for, for cutting, when cutting. Well, like I said, the model, you know, when you saw me in VCAR Pro, I told her to use the model boundary. Well, the model itself, the 3D model, was 28 by 3. But this piece is like, like I said, it's depending on which end you measure, it's about 5 inches or so. And I cut it 30 inches, so I had my clamps right out here on these four corners. And I used just, let's see, I've got one somewhere. Yeah, I use these real expensive. Yeah. Wood, it looks like, uh, yeah, there you plywood, go. Plywood yeah. clamps. And they just fit on there, and they only, they only hang over there about three-eighths if you push it all the way. But that's that's why I made this scrap. When I went out to cut this scrap, I, I just made it longer. You know, I could have made it longer than, than what I did. But I just made it longer than 28 so that I'd have room to clamp it for it to do that. So which, which model of V card were you were, did you have installed on that on that particular computer? Which which version? Which version? Uh, it's the, the latest. It's version 9, and then it, there's been one patch, or at least one that I know of. I've only added one patch. They so were, I'm at like 9.008 or something like that. Because they were talking, uh, if you select your model from the modeling select, the modeling selector boundary, uh, it, it'll put a, a boundary around the selected model. <laughs> they were talking about that. Uh, okay, that so, there, so there is a way to do it. There is a way to do it, yeah. Okay, well, I'll have to I'll have to experiment with that. Like I said, I'm just, <laughs> you know, the question last week was how do you import an STL? I didn't know we were going to get a whole full blown lesson on VCar <laughs> yeah. Pro 3D stuff because I don't know I don't know probably as much as some of you guys. I'm just playing, you know, I know how to bring it in and do what I showed you, and you know, like I said, some of that stuff's real easy because you just grab those free things drag and drop them in there and then you can scale them to what you want you can change the height to what you want uh for example this is one this is one i got from that uh facebook group i told you about and because i made this one bigger than what it was when i first imported it i made it bigger well then it made it really I would have needed like an inch and a half thick piece of wood and it would have taken like four days or something like that to carve it. I'm exaggerating, but it would have taken a lot longer. So what I did is I just changed the height so that even though this thing is, I think this is about 13 inches tip to tip on the wing or something like that. It's not really, the eagle's head is the highest part and it's not really sticking up that high. This, this this piece of maple was about three quarter and you can see it's hogged down about three eighths but but you can change the the height of the the model and still keep it the size but you do that in a different place 
Any other questions? Tommy G says I can show you whenever you're in a hangout. I'm never in hangouts, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Or I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Ted says now he has some new buttons to push. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm still new to the, at this, too. I was just trying to show folks. I knew how to draw a, a, a model, a 3D model, and bring in the STL, which was the whole purpose of this. Um, I just thought that I would try to show, you know, the folks that had VCAR Pro that, hey, there's some free stuff you may not even know. But I didn't even know it was there for the longest time. And I saw somebody post something on Facebook and somebody else, you know, they posted a picture of something and somebody else says, wow, that's really cool. Can I have that file? And, and they says, well, it's in VCAR Pro in the, in the clip art folder. And I went and looked and I'm like, holy moly, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. I didn't even realize it was there. So. And, and yeah. there's certain... There are certain 3D models which are, uh, uh, if, if, if you work with Aspire, you could actually take a 3D model. Let's say I'll just grab anything 3D here. Here's a. Uh, Hold on, Javi. Let me quit presenting so it'll oh, switch to you. All righty. There we go. So uh, so if you, if you grab, uh, um, if you have Aspire and you find a 3D model of something, but I'm talking a full 3D model, not a CNC 3D model where the model is like completely 3D. Uh, you can actually take it in a spire and sink it into the piece where only half of it is showing and then shrink it a bit and and uh, pseudo create a uh, a uh, CNCable 3d model for for you uh, it's, yeah. it's it's not that I, difficult I actually did something very similar to what you're talking about hobby and it, it to me it just didn't look as cool so i thought well i won't even use it i, I don't think i can put it on this laptop right. but in solidworks i on one plane i drew a circle i don't remember what it was like maybe a three inch diameter circle and then i did a reference plane 10 inches away from that plane and then drew like a six inch circle and then i did the uh whatever it's called lofted I, I don't even remember what it's called. Lofted something. I know what the how to do it. I just don't know what it's called. Right. But anyway, so it makes kind of like a cone because you're small here and it goes out to a bigger one. And just like what Hobby says, when you bring say that as an STL and then bring it in, you can bury like half of it into the material, and and it's almost like you've got a you know cheerleader megaphone or whatever you want to call it, yeah. lay it on the ground. And you're seeing half of it. Yeah, and and you can and you can actually shrink the size of it, uh, so so if you're only cutting a quarter inch, you don't want to uh, cut three inches, which so you 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 can shrink the half. But again, there's a big difference between a a model created for CNC. Sorry about that. A model created for CNC specifically, and a 3D model, for instance, that you would use on a um, on a 3D printer. Yeah. Eric Gussie Banjo says, nice haircut day. How come you didn't notice two weeks ago? I'm, I'm mad. Nobody knows. <laughs> uh, Becca's saying, is that Rocky? No, Becca, that's that's Jack. A black lab. He, he's still a he's actually taller than Rocky. He's growing like weed. He's not mine. I'm I'm puppy setting him. And uh, he he gets into too much stuff. He's about seven or eight months old, and he still likes to chew on stuff. So I've got him in a crate, and now you hear him in there raising sand, barking, and you can tell his bark is that's not an adult dog. Rocky's bark is much, much lower and, and meaner sounding. <laughs> but yeah, but they get they get along pretty good, considering. So. Anyway, I guess I probably confused everybody on this. Becca, you're probably scratching your head even more than you were last week. But uh, anyway, uh, we, we're way over time, I think. We still got 40 something folks watching. I appreciate y'all stopping in. Let me confuse y'all. Uh, like I said, uh, check check out the uh, the free stuff that comes with your VCAR Pro in the clip art. 
folder. Also, go check out the uh, Design and Make. I put a link down there, uh, as well as the one to Hobbies, uh, new vector design service. Um, and also to my buddy, Rich McNatt. So, uh, Kevin, I posted it to your Facebook and messages. I'm not sure. I must have missed something, but I'll, I'll catch up. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, check those out. Uh, like I said, for a few bucks, especially if you're like me and, and you know, you don't want to take the time to draw. I really don't have the time that it takes to do, you know, I mean, I can only guess what it took somebody to draw or to model something like that, uh, get the waves and the flag and all the stars and all that stuff. I believe I mean, Kate, I Kevin may have been talking about the uh, boundary, uh, how to do the boundary thing. Oh, okay. Okay, I will check that out. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get out of here. Uh, thanks so much, Javi, for helping me watch the chat and the questions and also sharing some of your knowledge. Uh, uh, Dave, what's uh, happening this Saturday? Uh, well, gosh, I'm glad you asked, Javi. Uh, we are having a uh a little meetup uh we mentioned i mentioned a little bit at the top of the thing here uh it's going to be saturday starting at 3 p.m um till i think we put till seven but it's basically till melinda runs us all off because it's at my good friend melinda davies uh shop um come have you know come have a good time uh i'll have a machine here uh, if you want to, you know, somebody who's thinking about a CNC and don't know much about them, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions. I'll even let you drive a little if you want to. Um, and, uh, you know, plus Melinda's got an awesome shop. Uh, huge. I think her shop is like 30 by 40, has some awesome tools in it. Uh, it'll be, be a lot of fun. And we were having Shane's Barbecue. So uh, if you just tuned in late before I said it, or didn't hear me say it earlier, uh, it's going to be uh, barbecue pork, mac and cheese, baked beans, uh, Texas toast, I guess they call it, uh, mm. and sweet and unsweetened tea. Um, and Tommy G, good to see you. I'm trying to make a comeback. You need to make a comeback, Tommy. Uh Anyhow, Javi, you got anything else you want to add, my friend? Uh, no, not that I know. Not that I can uh, think of. Um, everything's uh, uh, going well in my neck of the woods. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, seeing you this Saturday. Likewise. Uh, and, uh, and and everybody else is coming. I know we've got, uh, I don't know, 25 or 30 folks that have told me they're definitely coming. So, uh I got I got a bunch of barbecue, so I hope uh, I hope everybody gets a chance to make it. So, all right. Well, I guess if Javi, if you don't have anything else, I guess we'll go ahead and get out of here. Thanks again, guys, for watching. Uh, Ron Cleveland, Reginald Stanley, uh, Mark Lindsay in house, Sean Martyr. Trevor was uh, asking about my hat. Uh, don't you have these available in your uh, Gatton CNC uh, store uh, or website? Well, you know I do. Nobody buys the things, so I really don't try to push them as far as selling them. I just, you know, I give them away when I when I see somebody. I'll have some hats, uh, some shirts like this. Uh, also have some garage work stuff. I don't have a whole lot of hats left, actually, uh, but I've got a few. Well, Trevor, uh, Trevor, you got a choice. You can uh, get one on the Gatton side, or you can just come down here <laughs> from yeah. Canada. Yeah, I also have. Uh, I don't. I don't, I, I don't think I ever listed these on there, but I also have these mouse pads. But I had to get a ton of these to to get a decent price on them. And what I've been doing is, I, I just when somebody orders a machine, if they order a Garage Works, I throw one of these or throw one of these in the crate and if they order a gat and i throw one of these in the box so get rid of them that way i don't think i ever did put them on the website to sell but nobody okay. wants to buy them Ke out. kevin kevin might have a bit of a delay because he just answered that vector thing we were talking about 
Okay. The vector. That, that that that's what he posted on Facebook. Okay. Well, I'll definitely take a look, Kevin. If I got any questions, I'll, I'll hit you up on Facebook or something. Uh, because, like I said, I did try to. Uh, I can't remember which one it was. I did try to put a border. And I couldn't figure out how to do it. I didn't spend a whole lot of time, but uh, I thought I just figured maybe it was something that VCAR Pro wouldn't do, and you had to have the Aspire. So, okay. Well, I guess that's it. We'll keep rambling here. We've we'll dropped a few. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for tuning in and, and hanging around. I hope, like I said, I hope I didn't confuse y'all too much. But uh, but do try out the the free stuff that's in VCAR Pro. Uh, it's a lot of fun to make some of that stuff. Like I said, I've got, let's see if I can get it on shot here. I did that uh, eagle on the, my little pallet challenge thing, and that, that turned out really awesome. And that's kind of what got me got me fired up about trying some of this 3D stuff, because uh, once I did that on that pallet challenge cabinet thing, and I thought, well, heck, that's easy. I'm going to start playing around with this. So, uh, so yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see y'all probably next Wednesday with a, a wrap up or update of the uh, this Saturday's meetup. Everybody take care. We'll see y'all. Have a good weekend.